In this video, I'm going to show you how to select the subject very quickly, add it to this background, stretch the background to fit an Instagram post, and add text. Are you ready? It's Photoshop time, and you know the drill. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack. Yes! That's awesome! What? The quickest way to cut out a subject is to choose the quick selection tool, which is this fourth one down. Click on it, and then don't choose anything. It loads the toolbar with the select subject button up here. Just click it. Photoshop will figure it out for you and shrink wrap the marching ants, which is the selection identifier, for you. Hold the command and space bar to zoom in. Then choose the select and mask dialog box. It automatically chooses the refine edge brush for you, which is the second one down, because it knows you probably need to paint over some areas that it missed. And that's all we're going to do. We're going to click and paint. Don't do all your painting in one pass because Adobe Sensei's AI, which is a learning algorithm, it looks at everything you painted upon each click. Now here, I want to remove the blue, so I start in the blue, right? And it figures out I want to remove the blue. If I want to retain more of the fingers, I start in the fingers and paint over the fingers. See how that works? Space bar just to temporarily activate the move tool so I can pan down. Hold down the auto option key if it's in. See, there's some color cast in that shoe. I could choose a quick selection tool and just say, make sure you select that little bit. And there, that's all you have to do. Now you can tell Photoshop to activate the smart radius by clicking it on and say, look at one pixel all the way around my image and make sure that it's as tight as it can be. Depending on what I was doing, I may smooth it by two to four and I may feather by 0.2 to 0.8, but here I'm not going to do that. I don't think it needs it. And I can decontaminate the colors if there's a strong color background, but there really isn't. I'm putting this same image back in another similar blue sky. So I'm just gonna output new layer with layer mask because that, I'm gonna click okay, because that duplicates my layer, adds a layer mask, hit command or control zero, and it's ready to go. So I already have an image open that I want to put it into. And before I bring it over, let's get into configure it a bit. If I wanted to post this on Instagram as a, a, a vertical portrait, it's a four by five ratio. So it's 1080 by 1350. So what we need to do is click on the crop tool, choose ratio if it's not already there. And I can go ahead and just key in exactly what it is I want, which is 1080, tab over, 1350. And that's, that's the ratio I'm going to get command minus to shrink the, the image and screen. And this way I can kind of choose what it is that I want. I'll click inside to move it around. Yeah, I think something like this. I'll put her on this side. I'll click enter. So now that that's cropped, I need to stretch the sky, right? Quickest way to start this process is I'm going to choose the quick selection tool, choose the quick selection tool, and I'm just going to make a pass over the clouds and the mountain. Command space bar to zoom back in. Left bracket key for a smaller brush. Just making sure it's getting all of that cloud and mountain that it can. Then I'll choose the select and mask. Still didn't get this little part right here. So I'll help it with the quick selection tool. Little part right there. Now, if you're having a hard time, go ahead and click smart radius and pull it up to two or three pixels. And then I can pass over it with the refine edge brush telling Photoshop, hey, something's wrong here. Can you figure it out and help me out? And that did a, a much better job. I'm gonna output that to a new layer with layer mask, click OK, command zero to fit in screen. I'm gonna turn that back off and turn this back on because essentially we need this blue sky. The way I'm gonna handle this is I'm gonna select the background layer, duplicate it by hitting command or control J, hit S for the clone stamp tool, to make that work, you have to hold down the Alt or Option key and click where the bullseye, where you want it to source from, and then see inside my brush window, it shows me what it's going to copy. So I can now line up that horizon line, and essentially I just want to kind of, I'm going to do the same thing over here. I just want to mimic what's going on, because what I'm going to want to do is I want to stretch out this background or copy it or you know, whatever, whatever technique is going to get it to work for me. So I guess the first thing I would try, command minus to shrink the image down just a bit. The marquee tool, which is the letter M, pull this down, hit shift delete because I'm on a Mac. The fill dialog box pops up. Choose content aware fill and click OK. And let's see how this version of content aware does. There's actually two versions in Photoshop. This is the quick one. It's not the most refined, but most of the time it does an okay job. Wow, it did a really good job. Command or Control D, this image back on. So now this is bringing this back. Now I have the option if I wanted to, I could still hit the M key, select all of the sky. And remember, 
I'm not on this layer, right? I'm just on that background layer and I can hit Command or Control T for free transform, hold the shift key to skew the aspect ratio. And I can just pull this up just a little bit because I want to create an enhanced diagonal line here for a bit more energy. And then, you know, while, while I'm in here, why wouldn't I? I'll hit uh, Command or Control D. And let's go ahead and just blur that just a touch. It's gonna blur everything, but mostly it's the sky because I've got the clouds and the mountain on their own layer. I'll choose Gaussian blur just because I want to just soften it up just a bit, bring back my sharp clouds and sharp mountain. And now I'm ready to integrate my image, which I've already selected out. And I'll, the quickest way to get this image to the other one is to click on the layer, drag it up to the tab of the image you want it to go in. And here's the trick, you've got to bring it back down into the image and let it go. I need to drag it above the very top layer, hit the move tool so I can kind of position her wherever I want. And do you see this line right here? That tends to happen when you scale different size documents. Take a look at the mask, alt or option, click on it. See, that's the problem, it's, it's showing this little line. Quickest way to fix it, again, is M them for the marquee tool. Select well inside this, this dark black area, right? Then Command Shift I to invert the selection. Now I'm selecting everything outside, everything in, inside this white area. Hit Shift Delete, choose contents of black. OK, Command D to deselect, turn the eyeball back on, and that got rid of that line. So now I can move her anywhere I want. I can actually animate this to kind of have her come floating in, but I'm just going to have her about right here. Okay, so once I've pulled her over to this side, I can add a color balance. I'll clip it to... What the f***? What the f***? Just her. And I just want to tint a little bit of the midtones with the blue that we're seeing. Maybe I'll tint a little bit of the highlights with the blue, not too much, just to give a little bit more of that blue light hitting the overall scene. I'll push it to its own layer by hitting Command, Option, Shift, Letter E. I'll duplicate that. And then I'll, for just fun, I'll try something creative. I'll add a blur, Gaussian blur. Blur it a lot. Looks bad, right? But then come over to your blend modes and choose soft light. That maintains that kind of glowy look, kind of a dreamlike look. And then it also saturates the colors. It comes in at 100%. So just drag the opacity down to taste. And now let's add some text. Draw a text box with the text tool. Open up your character and paragraph tabs. And if you don't see those, just go up to window and put a check beside the character and beside the paragraph styles, whatever it is you want to see. And then I'm gonna double click inside my text Command A it to select everything. And I'm gonna say, just make that a little smaller. I need to change the letting, which is the spacing between the lines. Maybe I'll stretch the text a touch. Move tool to position it. And then to make it more visible, maybe I'll go to the FX panel and choose outer glow. Add a nice white glow to it. Really stands out with this layer style dialog box. I'll click OK. And now I'm ready to save it. So the ratio is 1080 by 1350, but the image is not 1080 by 1350. So let's save this. So I've got my original PSD file saved. Now let's go to image size. See the pixels, it's way bigger. So let's go ahead and the proportion should be correct. So now we can type in 1080 and it automatically corrects the 1350, which is the recommended size to post on Instagram. I'm gonna click OK. Now currently it's still a PSD file. I just hit Command Zero just to fill the screen. So I'll hit Command Shift S to save as. And here I need to make sure I toggle my format to a JPEG, which is what it needs. You need to embed the color profile of sRGB, which is perfect for web monitor viewing. Name it whatever it is you want to name it and click OK. Save. It's going to ask you a quality. Between 10 and 12 is fine. If file size is of importance, you can take it down to 10. The quality would be just as good, but it halves your file size. But this is overall a fairly small image at this point anyway, so whatever works for you. Click OK. Now, when you go to close this image, it's going to say, do you want to save it? And I don't, right? I've already saved my original PSD. It's now asking, do I want to save all the changes I've made, i.e. the image size? And I don't. I don't want to overwrite my original big file because I've already saved this as a smaller JPEG. So I'll click don't save. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> oh. oh my god, I did. This is Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.